guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope both of you are doing really, really well. So, this is another YouTube video, and we've got plenty of transfer rumors to discuss. And before we get into all that cool stuff, though, please do like and share the video. If you like my movies in general, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Leave me your opinions in the comments down below. And starting off with the big one Dominic Soboschlei to Liverpool is done. And no one saw this coming. I didn't see it coming, and but, but just like that, in flash, it has happened now. There was a thing with Shabash like that, this deal will be quick due to two reasons. Number one, due to his release clause. Second of all, Liverpool are fishing, but I didn't expect it to be this quick. I honestly didn't, but fair play to Liverpool. I think they got a real, real star on their hands. £70 million and Liverpool will be activating release clause, so and let's see if this can be an instalment or just one full payment of the release clause. So that's the main thing, but I think Shabash Light is a definite upgrade on whatever they got in that midfield. And 100% he'll make them a better team. And he'll provide that, what do you call that, creative spark. And that sometimes you need when you're playing against a low block. And you need someone maybe to take a shot. He, he can do that. If you look at his passing, he's very disguised with his passing. Until the last moment, you won't know what type of pass Sobrashlai is going to pick. So that's why I think Sobrashlai, excellent build with him from Liverpool. And I cannot lie, superb. Fair play. Well done. Uh, moving on to Manchester United, so David De Gea's contract has officially expired today. Now there was talk about people, oh, he's going to come back here, no problem, uh, he's going to come back. But, but there's been heavy links with Andre Onana recently, and Andre Onana is something that is concrete, is in the making, and that's something that could happen, which is, I think, very, very interesting, which I personally find very good. Andre Onana definitely upgrades Man United in goal. He's a better goalkeeper than De Gea at the moment. Not in terms of in their prime, but I think Andre and right now, in terms of style, in terms of ability, to, in terms of goalkeeper, I think he's a better goalkeeper personally. And he'll be coming in most likely, so that means David Hayer won't be signing a contract. And there was another report that Tim, Tom Heaton wasn't allowed to go to Luton due to this, so it's a massive, massive uh, situation, and that's a big, big upgrade, I think, first for Manchester United. I think this guy will genuinely bring levels of. Uh, ex Excellence to the team. I think he's as we saw in the Champions League final ball playing wise fantastic Fantastic goalkeeper can can create can almost from the goalkeeper position on the and in position He also plays like a pseudo centre-back if you know what I mean a false centre-back So he's heavily involved in possession in terms of playing off the back So I think these are some of the things that you have to look in my opinion That's why I think Andre and Anna coming in for the hair is a big news and the hair and moving up over talking about Chelsea and letting David De Gea's contract sparring. There's more news today regarding Maurizio Pochettino will be starting his Chelsea era today. And officially, Maurizio Pochettino is the new Chelsea head coach. So, uh, we got the first two days, Saturday, Sunday. I think then we got Monday where he's going to meet up the squad. And fourth is where preseason starts. And I saw good reports about preseason. Yes, it's going to be a. He's going to do a GAC contest. And now. What I understood of this was, it's basically the manager has the control of the session, right? And they have to run from one end to the other for 45 seconds and then 15 seconds rest and they do it until and until how long the manager wants. So the players might think, okay, are uh, we only going to do this for 15 minutes? Pot goes, no, we're doing it for an hour. So that's that's a very dreaded, dreaded test. And basically it's a B-Tech leap beep test. And I think... Eunice Tos Football, he gave a pretty good example about this. I think, of, I think he's feeling much more in detail than I can. So do go and see that video. And I thought he explained it pretty, pretty well, in my opinion. But it's basically a, a Spanish Argentinian version of the beep, bleep test with the manager has full control. And basically, these players, I want to see them dead. I mean, not like, not like literally, but like, you know what I mean. I want them to see. I want them to work really, really hard in preseason because now is the time to put the hours in. Because you got no matches, you got nothing else to do. You need to play a football matches uh, soon. So, and when and the normal season start, that's when the normally the tactical things of side takes place. But now preseason, it's all about fitness, building fitness for match day. And I, I think the preseason you have to build extra fitness. Compared to what you would need, need in a match day look. And if you look at the armies or soldiers of the training of those people. Their training is grueling. It's rigorous. 
compared to how to, when they had fight and when they fight they find everything so much easier right they can fight for hours because their training is so so strong and so so well done they're so well trained so they've done all the high yards there now when it comes to a actual war like or whenever they had to fight situation they're ready and that's what applies to football as well so if you put other hours in put in the work in pre-season we won't have to work as much in pre-season i mean the main season that's what Last year, I think happened with us. We didn't put it in enough hours in pre-season. We looked all over the place, shattering, no pre-season properly, and it resulted in us having a disastrous, I mean, a disastrous season. So, hopefully, I think the Pochettino pre-season plan, look, plan looks pretty good in this guy contest. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the players. Anyway, maybe we're going to see some bit of news. So, Aspi is off to Atletico Madrid. Good luck, Aspi. Wish him all the best. And it was Inter Milan looking like, but Atletico Madrid have come in and he's going to go to Atletico Madrid. Good news for Aspi. I like Aspi quite a He's a good defender. Very, very good uh, for his... I think he'll be good in a Spanish league type of setup where there's, there's less pressure from the Premier League. I think he lost the leg for the Premier League. But in Spain, under a coach like Simeone, I definitely think Aspi could absolutely smash it. And he'll be going there. Now, we've also got one more departure news. Loftus-Cheek is left. Chelsea officially, so he is an AC Milan player. So he will be playing his football in Italy. And we're going to have all the Cobham boys there. You've got Tomori, you got Giroud. I mean, not the Cobham boys, the Chelsea boys. Pulisic, Loftus Jig, Layout, Deon Anders. I think AC Milan, this is a very good sign. A very, very impressive sign. And I think uh, he's a, he's not Sandro Tonali. He's not a Milanese tier. Like he's going to bleed red or red and black, whichever one Milan fans prefer. But he's a good player. He's a very good football player. And I think he'll definitely look great, personally, in my opinion. Um, uh, Lost the cheek, I thought, on the Sari looked absolutely outstanding. But that useless friendly that we played against, I think, was some uh, American team for charity. Really, really cost his career here at Chelsea. And then, from everything they've there, ACLs there, really, really hard to recover. And that's what I'm a bit scared about Broya as well. Hopefully, he can follow a different fight. He can follow more of the writ. Part because Florian Ritz for Bayer has been absolutely brilliant despite getting that ACL injury. But Lotus Cheek and Hudson Odoi are the example of ACL injuries and then not being the same player. And I think Lotus Cheek has lost that burst of pace. Then he's been slogged any, anywhere on the pitch practically. He's not been very good. Uh, in terms of us, we didn't really give him a set plan where he was going to fit in the team. And then he's been used everywhere and that's what's ruined his career. So I think going to Milan, I think will be good for him. Especially if you get to play in this natural position, I think it can be a really, really good player for Milan. Now, moving over, we had to talk about all the incoming. So, Levy Koval, first of all, quickly talk about Levy Koval. Uh, Levy Koval, the Chelsea, so he wants talks by Pochettino before uh, everything, can sort, everything can be sorted and he can sign a new contract out of. Uh, I'm like, I hope Levy Koval doesn't, is not arrogant, you know? Like arrogant, oh, I want to play a certain amount of games. No, you cannot do that. And I know Pochettino has a backbone. He'll turn to get out and he's going to get sold. No, you have to make sure. He, I, I, I'm okay if he's, if you wouldn't ask him, coach, am I in your plans? Am I, what, what do I need to do to be in your plans, etc. I understand, but you cannot go to Pochettino and go, bam, uh, I'm going to play on, I want to play this many games. If you don't play me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave the club, etc. So I'm hoping that Levy Koval is mature enough to just go to Poch and get a sort of situation and sort it out quickly and we can hopefully get him pinned down to a new contract because this guy is a very, very talented defender and he is going to be probably one of the best defenders in the world. If he continues on this trajectory, I think very, very good from Levy Kobo. So hopefully, uh, everything with Pochettino goes well and officially we get to some new contract news. Uh, moving on to some incoming, so we have signed another youngster, so Alex Matos. Uh, the Norwich City midfielder, he will be officially a Chelsea player, so congrats and welcome to Chelsea, Alex Matos. Don't really know who he is, don't have never, I didn't watch the championship that much to be honest with you. But, there's another player coming in, he's going to go to the development squad, so good luck to him, let's see what he's made about. Another player that's going to be coming in is Diego Moreira, and this guy has been doing really, really well about Benfica, but now I'm, I'm not going to be like an expert and saying, oh, I think Moreira, we can be count, no, I haven't. But what I heard about him from Benfica fans is that he's a pretty good player. He's a very good player. And I think we could be getting a real superstar here. Now, 
He needs a loan. Let's see what we do with Maria. I think are we gonna use him? Doubt it. Are we gonna loan him? Probably yes. So it's gonna be interesting how we use him, in my opinion. But I think Diego Moreira coming in. Not a youngster. Let's see how he goes. Uh, moving on to the final big news of this video. Nicholas Jackson is officially a Chelsea player. So Nicholas Jackson has signed and he's gonna be signing an eight-year contract. He's he's old on he's sealed, and yesterday he did the photo ups and all the interviews and everything and the way he spoke I thought it was really, really impressive he wants to succeed he thinks he can do it so I hope that's more confidence in his own ability rather than overconfidence but you can only go by what you've seen and I think so far it's been very very good from Nicholas Jackson uh let's see how we plan to use him if Potts going to use him as a main striker now I feel like we, we will have to go for a main striker if you're not signing a top class goalkeeper so let's see but Jackson coming in I think he does remind me, as I said, of an Isak type of player who could do it from the wings and then he's transferred to the centre forward. Now, uh, Nicholas Jackson, let's see what we do with him. Anyway, anyway, this was my latest video around the situation with uh, um, Liverpool, so much like Man, Man United, Onana. And then we got some Chelsea Bill news as well. If you do like this video, please do like and share this video. If you like my in general, please do subscribe. To the channel as well, leave me your opinions in the comments down below and I'll see you guys later.